जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन भल्लभ गिरिवर जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय शोदान ब्रज जन रंजन जमुन चिरपन जय शोदान ब्रज जन रंजन जमुन चिरपन चुंज बिहारी गिरिवर गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन चीर भन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुन चीर भन जाय राधम गिरिवर धारी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 Ja 
ಜಾತ್ರೀಗುರುಯುತಾಪದಕಮಲೈಷ್ಣವಾಗ್ರಜಾ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಾಥೀವ ಸಾತ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾಮೃತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾಬನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾಣು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಶಾ ಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶಿವ ಸಾಧಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋ ಜಯ ಮುಧೀರಯ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರಾಯು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿ ಉತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಠಿಕೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ದೇವಕಿ ನಂದನಾಯ ಚ ನಂದಗೋಪ ಕುಮಾರಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮಃ ಪಂಕಜ ನಾಭಾಯ ನಮಃ ಪಂಕಜ ಮಾಲಿನಿ ನಮಃ ಪಂಕಜ ನೇತ್ರಾಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಪಂಕಜಾಂಗ್ರೇ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮಿನೇ ಗೌರತ್ಸ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ್ಯಾಯ ದೇವಾಯ ಗೋ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣಾಹಿತಾಯ ಜಗದಿತಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಗೋವಿಂದಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಷ್ಟಾಯ ಪುತ್ರೇ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತ್ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ 
निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवसादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुकुम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंगायते गिरिम यत्कृपा तमम वंदे श्री गुरु दिन तारिणम श्री परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम ओम पवित्रो पवित्रो वा सर्वावस्थम गतोपि वा यत्स्मरेत पुंडरीकाक्ष सभ्याभ्यंतरम सुचे श्री विष्णु श्री विष्णु श्री विष्णु चेतोदर्पणमर्जनम भव महाद्वाग्निर्वापन श्रेय खैरवचंद्रिका वितरण विद्यावधु जीवन आनंद अंबुदिवर्धन प्रतिपद पूर्णामृत स्वादन सर्वत्मस्थपन परम विजयते श्री कृष्ण संकीर्तन नम नाम कार्य बहुणा च सर्वशक्ति स्त्रातिमिता स्मरण काल एकदशी तव कृप भगवान् मापी दुर्दव मिदृश जानन अनुराग तृणादी सुनिचेना करुरपी सहिष्णुना अमाननीय मानदेन कीर्तन सदा हरि न धनम न जनम न सुंदरी कविता वाजगदीश काम मम जन्मनी जन्मनेश्वरे भवतद भक्तिरहतकी वै नंदनज किंकमा विषम भवां बुध कृपया तव पाद पंकूल सदर्शन विचित नयन गलदश्रुधारया वदनम गुधा गिर पुनकर्णच तम बपु कदा तव नाम ग्रहणे भविष्य युगा तम निमिषेन चक्षुष प्रवर्षाए तम शून्याय तम जगत्सर्व गोविंद मिहे नमे अश्लिष्य वा पादर तम पिनस्मादर्शन मर्महता कौत वा यथा तथा विधह तो लंपत मात प्रणनाथ स्वेवना हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे The appearance of Lord Varaha, Chapter Thirteen, Canto Three. I just read the verse. Shri Sukha Vacha, Nisam Nisam Yavacham Badato Mune Punyatmanam Repa Bhuya Prapapracha Kavravyo Vasudeva Kathadrata Shri Sukha Vacha. निसम्यवाचम वदतो मुने कौरव्यो वासुदेवा कथा दृता श्री सुख उवाच निसम्यवाचम वदतो मुने पुण्यात्मना नृपा भूया पप्रच कौरव्यो वासुदेव कथा दृता Shri Sukho Vacha, Shri Sukhdev Goswami said, Nisamya, after hearing, Vacham, talks, Vadata, while speaking, Mune, of Maitre Muni, Punya, Tamam, the most virtuous, Nipa, O King, Bhuya, then again, Papracha, inquired, Papracha, Papracha, inquired, Kauravya, the best among the Kurus, Vidura, Vasudeva Katha, topics on the subject of the personality of Godhead, Vasudeva, Adhrita, one who so adores. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishtra Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri Sukhudeva Goswami said, O King, 
after hearing all those after hearing all these most virtuous topics from the sage maitreya vidura inquired further on the topics of supreme personality of god which he adored which he adored to hear i'll repeat the translation shri sukadev goswami said o king after hearing all these most virtuous topics from the sage maitreya vidura inquired further on the topics of the supreme personality of god which he adored to hear purport the word adrita is significant because it indicates that vidura had a natural inclination for hearing the transcendental message of the supreme personality of god and he was never fully satisfied though continue, continuing to hear these topics he wanted to hear more and more so that he could be more and more blessed by the transcendental message hare krishna shri prabhupada ki jai thank you prabhuji and mathi ji for joining I'm very grateful joining subara prabhu nirpa mathi ji dandavat pranam balamani mathi ji hare krishna hare krishna prabhu ji dandavat pranam hare krishna prabhu ji dandavat pranam krishna hare krishna thank you thank you prasad prabhu madhavi mathi ji dandavat pranam ramya mathi ji dandavat pranam thank you for joining arvind prabhu and padma mathi ji dandavat pranam hare krishna prabhu ji dandavat pranam Shilpa Mataji, Ajay Prabhu, Dandavat Pranam, Hare Krishna. Meera Mataji, Malingamaya Prabhu, Dandavat Pranam, the whole family, Anuradha Mataji. Anandaram Prabhu and Charane Mataji, long time, Dandavat Pranam. I was thinking to call you, it's been a long time. Kiran, Kiran Prabhu, Dandavat Pranam, thank you for calling, thank you for joining. Hare Krishna. Shishya Mataji, Satya Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dandavat Pranam. Shishya Mataji also, Dandavat Pranam. and uh, hari shri hari prabhu dandavat pranam thank you for joining saraswati mata ji surendra prabhu dandavat pranam lavanya mata ji hari krishna thank you prabhu dandavat pranam raju prabhu shirsha mata ji hari krishna dandavat pranam thank you for joining padma mata ji padma gandhar hari krishna prabhu ji raman murthy prabhu hari krishna thank you for joining hari krishna prabhu ji Hare Krishna. Pavan Prabhu, Sandhya Mataji, thank you for morning Aarti. Sorry, I could not get up. I had severe headache. So please forgive me. Then not run up, Prabhuji. And uh, wonderful program you did in your village. It came in the, it came in the national news. Hare Krishna. Hare <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all your service. Hare Krishna. Sandhya Mataji, Ram Reddy Prabhu, Dandavat Pranam, thank you for joining. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. संजय प्रभु दंडोत प्रणाम थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दंडोत प्रणाम प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण दास राज प्रभु एंड मानस समाधि जी थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दंडोत प्रणाम हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी दंडोत प्रणाम प्रभु जी मधुसूदन प्रभु दंडोत प्रणाम थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग प्रवीण प्रभु एंड सुमा माता जी दंडोत प्रणाम मधुसूदन प्रभु दंडोत प्रणाम थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अनुराग प्रभु थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग हरे कृष्ण Lovish Prabhu and and Hari Priya Mata Ji, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you for joining. Dandavat Pranam Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam Prabhu Ji. Deepa, Deepa Mata Ji, thank you for joining. Hare Krishna Prabhu Ji, Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Santosh Aitya Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Dandavat Pranam, whole family, Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Dandavat Pranam. Dandala Mata Ji, Dandavat Pranam, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dandavat Pranam. Satyadev Prabhu and Sri Vali Mata Ji, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you for joining, whole family. हर्षल प्रभु दंडवत प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी दंडवत प्रणाम सुनील प्रभु हरे कृष्णा दंडवत प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा दंडवत प्रणाम राजा रमेश प्रभु तुलसी माता जी एंड होल वंडरफुल फैमिली दंडवत प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा प्रभु दंडवत प्रणाम हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू थैंक यू ऑल फॉर चूजिंग टू जॉइन दिस ऑन द एकादशी हैप्पी एकादशी टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड इट्स सो एक्साइटिंग टू ऑलवेज बी विद ऑल ऑफ यू यू नो फॉर रीडिंग भागवतम um the best the best part is when we all friends when we all friends meet we read bhagavatam so what what a beautiful friendship it is isn't it right we all are meeting we all friends are meeting and we are reading bhagavatam i i i really want to go back to my college days again sometimes i feel because i wasted my time with my friends you know um, maybe if i take another but i pray to shila prabhupada that he introduces me to krishna consciousness at a very young age 
and in my college with my college friends i read shrimad bhagavatam how many would want to read shrimad bhagavatam with your college friends hari bol hari bol yes padma mata ji is so happy she is lifting her hand yes i want to read again <laughs> yes bravo that will be wonderful experience such a nice thing right such a nice beautiful thing to do but it's so unfortunate we were talking about tendulkar straight drive or we were talking about you know some nonsense uh, sport or some movie that just got released you know, we just wasted so many cream years of our life you know not knowing shrimad bhagavatam not knowing krishna consciousness if at all there is another birth you know i'm sure i mean i'll i have a million births more but million births i want to be a krishna devotee and i want to be introduced to krishna consciousness that's my prayer and you all please pray for me that uh, that should be fulfilled hari krishna so um yeah ramarama mata ji dandavat pranam thank you for joining hari krishna prabhu ji abhi mera class ho gaya isliye ஒரு <laughs> in the prayers of creation after that i could not attend a kinchen pray prabhu's class um i missed that one so <clears throat> i i missed that one there there prabhu you covered the 12th chapter is it right prabhu to prabhu finished the 12th chapter right the appearance of kumaras and others yes prabhu ji yes prabhu ji correct yeah 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 so it's again a wonderful chapter how brahma started creating kumaras right uh sanaka sanatana sanandana right all the, all the four kumaras and then uh just give a little recap you know not and not on detail he created the four kumaras then he created uh, um when when he asked them to when he asked the kumaras to um start the creation start the start the progeny started uh, started as asked them to start the population the four kumaras told no you know we know what's going to happen we are not going to get into this business we are just going to meditate on the lotus feet of the supreme lord so we are not i'm sorry we cannot do it right so um, it it is father it is brahma who is creating it and uh, he wants his children to assist him and that's his duty actually that's the duty that's the that's the job he has taken brahma has taken is to supply all the material all, uh, all the living entities in the material world with everything that they need to make progress in spiritual life that's the main goal of brahma so all the resources are already given see brahma doesn't make the elements brahma uses the elements right understand this he is a secondary creator so and then he has to create the bodies he has to create the bodies the yantra so we can say in which the souls can go and and finish their journey right so uh, brahma wanted his children to be uh, helpful to him but the four kumara said no you have made us but you know uh, i don't think uh, uh, i i don't think we are interested in that activity then out of his anger came rudra uh, you know and uh, lord shiva is that rudra so there are 11 rudras by the way and uh, brahma named this child actually child child came out and like okay i came out in bluish color and like what do you want me to what do you want to call me as he said you are rudra and then uh, he started his creation brahma said okay you are also born out of me so why don't you start the creation so he started the creation but the mood in which he created you know the consciousness once again the garbhadan sanskar that we say uh the concept conceptually is same that uh, you know born out of anger and not that he was in anger lord shiva is transcendent to all this but he was going to deal with people who were in that consciousness so maybe he was thinking on them and that's what came out the abominable characters unlimited children with abominable characters came out and rama was bewildered oh my god what are you doing stop your creation i don't think you should do this i think the best thing that you can do for this universe is to okay we can also run the universe as shiva but you 
meditate. You do penance. That's better for you. And then he had another 10 children. Um, he created the sages, the children. Now, when I said here creation, understand that he's bringing the souls who are already there, right? So when, when he created somebody called Kardama Muni, right? Uh, it means he did not create Kardam Muni. He created, a, he gave a body in which Kardam Muni came. So Kardam Muni already existed. The soul who took the role of Kardam Muni in this creation already existed. So Brahma is bringing everything together, and his job is to enable the universe so it functions, and uh, the activities start off right. So everything in this world is create is, is coming out of Brahma, but it is given by the Supreme Lord. Understand this very clearly. So. First of all, you know, the materialistic, uh, before, you know, we begin this chapter, you should understand that the materialistic education teaches us that we create things, right? I mean, uh, we create things. That's what the materialistic education says. But actually, we create nothing. Everything is coming from God only. You should understand that, you know, like, for example, if I ask a question, is um, artificial intelligence or data science course created by us? Uh, you might say... Oh, I think we only created it, right? No, I'm sorry. If Brahma has not given it, it will not come. These things will not come. We are, they are just appearing. These things are just appearing whenever the right time comes. Everything is already given. Everything is already given. We are actually in illusion. We are thinking that we are creating something new. You know, we are, we are able to... Of course, you can manipulate the material matter, but even that material matter is given by Lord Brahma only or coming through Lord Brahma only, Right? And all the emotions, including false ego, including ahankara, including anger, in we pride, everything is coming from our, our, our mind. It is influencing us. Uh, so there is a whole new way of looking at the world. There is a whole new way of looking at the world when you look at it in the way that you are just being, um, you are just being asked to use something. You are not producing anything, or something is influencing you. So here is the thing. There is this whole stadium of things which Brahma has created and you are a soul in between the stadium, right? You're just the soul in between the stadium. And all these things are available for you to use and all these things are also going to use you, right? The modes of material nature, the, the elements, everything. So actually, there is nothing that you and me are going to create in this world. It's already there. It's already just that it will manifest according to your desire, right? So we all have come here with so many desires, uh, but Brahma's desire was to serve the Supreme Lord, right? So Brahma's desire was to have children who are going to help him create the material world. So then after that, you know, he created uh, those, those children and and then there is Daksha Prajapati and then there are more and more. So Brahma produced many children and then and they started the progeny and uh, it flooded the world with population and Brahma was very happy. But he still felt something more can be done, something more can be done. I don't think I'm sufficient. I don't think this is enough. This population is not enough. We need more. Why, why Baba is more population? Because he can serve more souls, right? One thing we should learn from our Acharya Brahma, Brahma is, ours is Brahma Madhva, Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. So actually we are talking from our Acharya, is even creation is a service, right? So we all as devotees, we should have children and we should have more and more children. Right? It's a service. Uh, having a child doesn't mean you have to admit him in international school and pay his fees. No, um, that's your, uh, you know, your thought process. But having a child means you're serving a, serving a soul of Krishna. So serve as many souls. Okay, Prabhu, you know, I'm already married. I already have two children, one child. I'm already this much old. So now your duty is to serve other children. Right? Uh, that's also service. Making sure all the children who are taking birth here are becoming Krishna conscious. So this is, we are learning from Brahma. You know, Brahma is also uh, totally in the mood of service. He wants to create more, right? So the last chapter ends with, uh, you know, how he creates different elements, you know, how, like, uh, how he handed over, how he created Swayambhu Manu, right? Manu is one of the greatest uh, uh, childs of Brahma. And he also married his first daughter. Uh, the father Manu handed over his first daughter Akuti to Sage Ruchi and middle. So Manu's children, he is now getting into the next Manu's children. Right? Here we're talking about Swambhu Manu. 
and devavati to say kardama and the youngest so there is a whole you can read the chapter 12 to understand who was manu's wife and how many children he had and how he handed over so many other children uh, and got them married and they further had children everything is happening right everything is happening there so so nice so all this creation exercise is being told and suddenly vidura he feels some emptiness and he wants to discuss about the supreme personality word okay okay i know i know brahma has done brahma has created a lot of things but when will i hear about the supreme lord so that's devotee's anxiety you know the devotee is always devotees are always anxious to hear about the supreme lord the creation business the scientific business the the whole um, mode of passion related business is okay but where is the supreme lord in it right so even when the difference between i'm talking about myself the difference between me watching b r chopra mahabharat in 1994 as compared to watching mahabharat in 2022 uh, star plus mahabharat is i was more interested in krishna as compared to then i was interested in krishna but i wanted to just see how krishna handles things how uh, he manages big maharathis uh, but the interest was more on the story and the fighting and the you know boys right i mean um, boys always like to do fighting and accidents you know cars and that's the kind of games they like so for me mahabharat was that right Uh, but now mahabharat is is absent if there is no krishna in that so in the same way vidura also okay okay maitreya muni you are telling me about the creation of brahma but by the way um, okay it's nice he did all these things krishna can do anything so his child brahma can also do a lot of things but can you tell me about the supreme personality world right so his, his inquiry became even more um, uh, even more uh, personal right and and vidura is such a person that he had the association of supreme personality god right uh, he is not somebody who is inquiring who has not seen the supreme personality god in fact he see the swayam bhagwan he has seen the swayam bhagwan shri krishna krishna is to bhagwan swayam he he directly saw him and krishna loved him also right uh, it's explained that krishna when he went to his house vidura's house uh, uh, when he came to hastinapur and uh, his wife was feeding him um they did not they were not prepared and you know that whole story where vidra's wife is giving bananas and uh, she was giving the peel of the bananas and she was throwing the real banana down right i mean she was not concentrating and krishna was eating it and he was reciprocating to her uh, to her love at the same time it is explained krishna kept his feet in the lap of vidra <laughs> right <laughs> just see imagine you know, how intimate you be right i don't know how many of you Uh, i'm sure you know in 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 you remember those days with your grandmother grandfather you know it's so unfortunate when i think that you know today's children they don't have access to their grandmother and grandfather in different cities but i remember sleeping with my grandmother uh, with my head on her lap sometimes uh, sometimes my feet on her lap also not like you know you should keep your feet on your grandmother but she would like to pull pull it and you know uh, make you cuddle you and uh, uh, those those warm hugs you know grandmother grandfather parents brothers sisters uncles right all that so uh, that only happens when you have that intimate relationship you can't just go and put your feet in somebody's lap uh, in the same way uh, here lord krishna is putting his feet in vidra's lap in his own house right and he is enjoying like this is my house uh, this is my house because this is the house of his devotees right so that vidura which had such a personal experience of krishna who had so much intimacy with krishna is eager to hear about krishna you are like okay brahma brahma's creation okay maitre muni i only asked i only asked that how did brahma create but by the way you know cut the topic you know now let's get into the real stuff you know i want to hear about um i want to hear about krishna i want to hear about what the supreme lord is doing right uh, tell me how did he did what he did um, so uh, like the shloka savay pam sam parva dharma yato bhakti ru sakshaje adokshaje ahite ki aprahyata yatma su prasidati yayatma su prasidati the prasidati the happiness happens only when you serve that supreme lord and one of his services that is most pleasing to the devotees is hearing about the supreme lord shravanam right very very important so when you are talking about the supreme lord you are so happy you are so satisfied but there is one uh, 
problem in uh, today's day and uh, age. The chapter that we're going to read is very inconceivable. We can finish this chapter just by reading the 50 uh, translations quickly. In 10 minutes, it is done. But you would not appreciate it unless um, unless you're able to unless you're unless you're humble enough to uh, accept this uh, accept this story uh, with awe and reverence of the greatness of Supreme Lord. Right? You have to understand how great the Supreme Lord is. Only then you can appreciate and actually you know dwell in this chapter. Actually feel happiness in this chapter because it's going to be inconceivable. What you're going to hear about the Supreme Lord will be out of our imagination. Right? I mean like a big boar, uh, Varahadev coming and lifting the earth. Come on, what is this? like beyond our thought process. But we will appreciate and enjoy this only if we um, we we know the greatness of the Supreme Lord, right? And we remove our uh, logic out of our head. Okay, stop measuring. Stop trying to imagine how can somebody lift the whole planet, right? I mean. If he is on the planet, how can he lift the planet? Or if he is not in the planet, where is he lifting it from? And what happens when he touches the planet? Maybe that part of the planet will be destroyed. This is, this is, the, the, this is the materialistic thinking process, uh, which doesn't uh, allow us to uh, accept God the way he is. And one of the main things is because we are so addicted to artificial world today, right? Uh, we use these gadgets which make us feel world is in our hands, right? When you when you hold a mobile phone today, actually the whole world is in your hands. You feel like that. That that pumps up your false ego. We are living in these conditioned rooms with air conditioning, uh, where everything is conditioned. Huh? Uh, how many of you felt yesterday's uh, rain, right? Uh, none of you felt because you never you are not outside your flats. You were uh, very much inside the flat, and the flat said, uh, uh, what is that, um, a generator, which would immediately start the power as soon as the power goes away. Forget about the wind and the rain. You did not even feel the lack of electricity in your house. right? That is the kind of uh, setup in which we are living, where the, the aspect of distance, the aspect of weight, the aspect of height cannot be understood by you because we are using too many gadgets you know for for me traveling from here to five kilometers is 10 minutes right because i don't really travel i am just going in a wahan and and i don't appreciate what is five kilometers but if you walk for five kilometers then you know oh my god five kilometers is so far you know some days back i was telling um subaru pro that you know I, I actually walked from my house to his house just for a walk that morning it took me like 45 minutes 45 or maybe close to an hour and it was such a long walk. And then I was wondering, oh, we keep going. And I keep telling, oh, we live very close by. We don't live close by. We are we feel close by because of these gadgets, because of, um, you know, this car and everything. So when I walked so long, then I understood the distance. And now when I, when I was reading Varahadev's chapter, uh, I'm actually understanding how big the Supreme Lord would be. That if I'm talking about five kilometers to be such, such so great, so big, what was the size of Varahadev? Then he was lifting the whole planet, right? Anyway, so that's what I said. You know, you have to be grounded and you have to have a relationship with the nature. Uh, you should touch the nature, be with the nature to understand the greatness of the Supreme Lord. In an artificial setup, it's very difficult to appreciate. You will hear the chapter now. We'll, I'm going to start the reading chapter now. But to appreciate, if you're not able to appreciate what is being told, that's only because, because of your disconnect with the God's creation. You are in your illusion with these gadgets which are not allowing you to feel the God's creation, right? So, so with that background, this first verse, Sukadeva Goswami said, O King, after hearing all these most virtuous topics from sage Maitreya, Vidura inquired further on the topics of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which he, uh, which he adored to hear, right? Which he adored to hear. Prabhupada is saying that's the adoration we all should have. So the translation number two, Vidra said, O great sage, what did Swayambhuva, the dear son of Brahma, do after obtaining his very loving wife? So what did he do? Right? So he's further inquiring, text three, O best of the virtuous, the original king of the kings, Manu, he is king of, king of the kings, was a great devotee of the personality of God and Hari. 
and thus it is worth hearing his sublime character and activities. Please describe them. I am very eager to hear. Right. So the first Manu that is created, and how many Manus come in a day of Brahma? Anyone? Fourteen. Yeah, fourteen Manus. So in the beginning of the creation. So here, uh, Swayambhu Manu is brought forward, and here Lord Brahma is is uh, going to talk to his son. So Vidura is asking, tell me the qualities of this Manu who happens to be one of the greatest devotees of Supreme Lord. Text 4. Persons who hear from a spiritual master with great labor and for a long time must hear from the mouths of pure devotees about the character and activities of pure devotees. Pure devotees always think within their hearts of the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead who awards his devotees liberation. Right? Now here, as he wants to inquire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is also inquiring about the devotees of the Supreme Lord. Right? Because, uh, because Vidura himself is a devotee and uh, he interacts so many times with Bhishma, who is also a great devotee. And he interacted with uh, 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 what is it? Krishna's cousin, Uddhava, who is also a great devotee. So he wants to also hear about this great devotee, Swayambhu Manu. Because through a devotee eyes, you can actually see the Supreme Lord. Supreme Lord is accessible through the eyes of a devotee, you know, through the voice of a devotee. So here in the purport, Prabhupada says, not only must they hear about the activities of the Lord, but they must also hear from the transcendental qualities of devotees who are constantly thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord within their hearts. Worship of the devotee, at the, at the end of the paragraph, Prabhupada says, worship of the devotee is more potent than worship of the Lord. It is therefore the duty of the transcendental students to hear of pure devotees as explained by similar devotees of the Lord. <laughs> because one cannot explain about the Lord or his devotee unless one happens to be a pure devotee himself. Right? So it's very difficult. The effectiveness of our Bhagavatam class here um, is also dependent on whether I have devotion. Right? Because if I have devotion, then I can actually explain uh, about great devotees. See, if you see what is Prabhupada saying here, um, it is therefore the duty of the transcendental students to hear of the pure devotees and explain by similar devotees of the Lord because one cannot explain about the Lord and his devotee unless one happens to be a pure devotee himself. Right? Anyway, we are on sadhakas, practicing devotees. Um, and uh, through, this, through this practice, maybe one, one, one life will become pure devotees by Krishna's grace. And what does it mean to be a pure devotee? What does it mean to be a pure devotee? It's not a designation. It's a service again that you again discuss about the Supreme Lord and pure devotees. Right? Yeah. Text 5. Sri Sukadeva Goswami said, the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, was pleased to place his lotus feet on the lap of Vidura because Vidura was very meek and gentle. The sage Maitreya was very pleased with Vidura's words and being influenced by his spirit, he attempted to speak. Right? So, Vidura is asking. I mean, Maitre is literally seeing there is a pure devotee here and uh, he is asking about pure devotees. <laughs> Swayambhu Manu. So, let me talk about Swayambhu Manu, one pure devotee to another pure devotee, which is Vidura. Right? So, in, Pro in Purpur Prabhupada says, the personality of Godhead was pleased to dine sometimes with Vidura at his home and while resting, he placed his lotus feet on the lap of Vidura. Maitre was inspired by the thought of Vidura's wonderful fortune. So Maitre was actually thinking, you're asking me to talk about devotees. You yourself are a great devotee. How fortunate are you? I'm sorry, I have to take this call. It's coming from the farm. Please excuse me. Hello? Huh. Huh. Ah, okay. 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 So there is an IIT camp happening in uh, Vaishnava Seva Kunj. And surprisingly, every time, I don't know why, but whenever IIT students come, it rains and pours like anything. <laughs> so yesterday night, it so much rained that the whole hall was drenched with water, you know. And there were like 35 students and it was 11, 30, 12 o'clock in the night. I was constantly on calls with them, what to do, what to do, what to do. Because it not only rained, it poured, right? And it was like uh, uh, stones, right? The, 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 what, do you, what do you call them? Like 
the ice stones falling like tap 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 everywhere hail storms hail storms bro yeah it, it was like completely all over the place and the students literally got scared and 12 o'clock in the night i was talking to them like you know where will they sleep because everything is drenched the whole place is like filled with water all the vegetables that we kept everything is submerged right now just like earth planet is submerged <laughs> in this chapter our vegetables everything is submerged you know everything is gone and i always wonder why does it happen every time only iit students come to our campus i don't know why <laughs> krishna has a different plan for iit students right um, last time uh, students came from iit bombay and there was a camp and it poured like anything and they were wondering we should go to some other place can you prabhu can you find out some other place how can i find some other place if this is the place you have you want to stay you stay and please try to adjust but anyway they adjusted one more day but yesterday night also it happened like that um, right after this lecture i'm going there so uh, i have some service um, there but it's kind of again you know uh, maybe krishna is making them feel the nature the material nature and you know, and preparing their consciousness to hear from different brahmacharis um, different senior brahmacharis are going to come one by one and give lectures and go there is a whole plan they have made out but unfortunately the whole night they couldn't sleep properly and i told the brahmacharis you know that come on let's compromise on the mangalarti <laughs> because after they after they sleep at 1 or 2 o'clock you know what will they get up again and hear uh, lectures if they get up so early for mangalarti so they are having a little late day the whole adjustment is made anyway so coming back to this uh, chapter no maitreya muni is going to talk about the supreme personality of god so first is going to talk about manu right so text number 6 the sage maitreya said to vidra after his appearance manu the father of mankind along with his wife does utter the reservoir of vedic wisdom brahma with obeisances and folded hands yeah, it's very important how do you address uh, brahma right how manu the father of man the father of man can along with his wife is addressing to the supreme lord he's saying text 7 you are the father of all living entities and the source of their sub, uh, subsistence because they are all born of you please order us how we may able to render service on to you right so it's very clear say, how can i serve you this beautiful verse right how can i serve you please tell me how can i serve this this is what we as devotees also ask you know how prabhu how can i serve you right so here uh, manu is asking his father and and propad in the last line of his small purport he says a father's duty is to bring up the son until he is grown and the and the, when the son is grown up it is a duty it is his duty to render service on to the father right so uh, this is our culture for us you know this is our culture we don't produce children throw them in uh, outside and say oh you and me are not related after 14 years you figure out your life and the son becomes you know whatever he becomes in life and the father is independent he doesn't want to accept you know people do that western culture is so third grade so that they actually do that you know once i was in a i was in an office in in boston and uh, we were having a normal meeting in the office and one lady you know she came and she sat uh, in the meeting she was an american and a good friend of mine sheila atkins her name was sheila atkins and uh, she came and told um, she was like a little irritated so i said asked sheila what's going on you look you don't look to be um, uh, you, you look you look disturbed and she's like you know what lakshman he is 14 years old and still he wants to live with us i said what <laughs> you know just imagine you know the Uh, she's telling is she's he's 14 years old he still wants to live with us he doesn't want to become independent he's just he's just is not making his own money he's not i asked who are you talking about he said i have a son and, and a daughter maybe i forgot but i have a son and he is 14 years old and he's not even going and making his own money he's not independent he's not i was thinking my god what kind of a culture is this they and i asked her so what is it, i mean what does it mean uh to be uh, making his own money yeah he has to go out figure out his life you know we have our we have our life to live and i felt my god what kind of a culture is this right where you are bringing up children um so that they can get out of the house and you can enjoy right so it's like you created you created something and you're throwing that person into the society to for him to figure it out and the society to go through what they have to go through and you want to enjoy 
That's the whole point. I want to enjoy sense gratification. So children are a problem. In fact, as days go by, many of the Western countries are not having children. Do you know that? India is going to become the greatest country for one other reason that we have children. There are many countries where there are no children. Right? When COVID came in places like Norway and uh, some European countries, they were worried that all the people are dying because they don't have children. And the population really is decreasing, you know. So, uh, but we uh, think having child is a is a duty. Like, like here, Prabhupada says, the father's duty to bring up the son until he is grown. And when the son is grown up, it is the duty to render service onto the father, right? So, beautiful explanation of our culture itself. Text 8. Uh, o worshipable one, please give us your direction for the execution of duty within our working capacity so that we can follow it uh, for fame in this life and progress in the next. You might It might sound like a little materialistic uh, uh, things that he is asking, right? So that I can get fame in this life and also prepare for the next life. And, but at the end of the day, even that duty is for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. That you should understand. So Aimbo Manu looks to be asking something which is materialistic. Uh, but that's not the way. It should be understood. And Purport Prabhupada says, Brahma is a direct recipient of the Vedic knowledge from the personality of Godhead. And anyone discharging his entrusted duties in disciplinary section from Brahma is sure to gain fame in this life and salvation in the next. The disciplinary section from Brahma is called the Brahma Sampradaya. Right? And it descends as follows. Brahma, Narada, Vas, Vyasa, Madhvamuni, right? Or Padmanabha, Narahari, Madhava, Akshobhya, Jayatirtha, Jnana Sindhu, Dayanidhi, Vidyanidhi, Rajendra, Jayadharma, uh, Purushottama, Brahma, uh, Brahman Yatirtha, Vyasa Tirtha, Lakshmipati, Madhavindra Puri, Ishwara Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Swarup Damodara, and Sri Rupa Goswami and others, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Krishna Das, Kaviraj Goswami, Narottam Das, Thakura, Vishwanath Chakrati, Thakura, Jagannath Das Babaji, Bhakti Vinod Thakura, Gaur Keshwar Das Babaji, Srimad Bhakti Tanta Saraswati, A.C. Bhakti Vinod Swami Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> he also wrote his name, Prabhupada, you know. I mean, see, I mean, he's writing because he wants to be Related to the sampradaya, don't think is uh, he is writing uh, because you know he wants to tell that he's great or something. Prabhupada is writing his name because he wants to be with his guru, right, in service. And uh, how much pleasure? Just imagine how much pleasure Prabhupada is taking in writing all the sampradaya list in the purport, in the purport, you know, where he's talking about Brahma and all the people who are trained by Brahma in Brahma sampradaya, right? So Prabhupada writes in the last paragraph, Prabhupada says, this line of disciplinary succession from Brahma is spiritual, whereas the genealogical succession from Manu is material. But both are on the progressive march towards the same goal of Krishna consciousness. So Manu produced the whole creation on the order of Brahma, but that was also spiritual activity. Text 9, Brahmo Vacha, no Brahma is speaking. Lord Brahma said, my dear son, O Lord of the world, I am very pleased with you and I desire all blessings for both you and your wife. You have without reservation surrendered yourself onto me with your heart full of, with your heart for my instructions. So he's saying, I appreciate. And, and he's saying, O oh, Lord of the universe, because he recognized Swayambhu Manu is, is a Swayam uh, avatar of the Supreme Person of God. He himself is coming as his son to assist him in the creation. Right um, now, in the paragraph at the end, again Prabhupada speaks about the father and son relationship. Please hear uh, the father and son relationship as exhibited here in the dealings of Brahma and Manu is excellent. Both the father and the son are well qualified, and their example should be followed by all humankind. So both of them are well qualified. Huh? Brahma is greatly qualified. Manu is also greatly qualified. Manu, the son. Unreservingly, unreservedly asked the father Brahma to instruct him. And the father, who was full of Vedic wisdom, was very glad to instruct. The example of the father of mankind may be rigidly followed by mankind, and that will advance 
the cause of the, the relationship of fathers and sons, right? So this example, we should remember how we should take instruction from our fathers, right? Like our spiritual father is Srila Prabhupada, right? If you're not yet got initiated by a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, your father is Srila Prabhupada. And we should always remember that, how we can serve Srila Prabhupada. Yes. Text 10. Oh, hero, your example is quite befitting a son in relationship with his father. This sort of adoration for the superior is required. One who is beyond the limit of envy and who is sane accepts the order of his father with great delight and executes it to his full capacity. So Lord Brahma is saying, if you are a perfect son, you will execute my order to the full capacity. And your example is exemplifying for the rest of the creation. At the end, Prabhupada says in the purport, from the material point of view, the four sages disobedience. Now he's quoting... Now, what about the four Kumaras who disobeyed, right? Now, are they not perfect sons? Uh, they did not obey to the order because Manu here is uh, taking the order and is like, I want to I want to serve you. But the four Kumaras said, no, we are not interested. But here Prabhupada is saying from the material point of view, the four sages disobedience to the order of their father was certainly abominable. But because such disobedience was for a higher purpose, they were free from the reaction of disobedience. Those who disobey their fathers on material grounds, however, are surely subjected to disciplinary reaction for such disobedience. Manu's obedience to his father on material grounds was certainly free from envy. And in the material world, it is imperative for ordinary men to follow the example of Manu. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So... Uh, when you are in devotional platform, sometimes you disobey things. But as long as it is for a higher cause, the disobedience is not a bad thing. For example, you if someone ignores his duty, what is assigned to him in the office, it's not good. Even for a devotee, it is not good. But sometimes the devotee takes his spiritual duty more important than his material duty. Sometimes he does that. So uh, he doesn't get a bad karma of taking money for material and not doing his job perfectly, but uh, he should go back and finish it also, right? So disobedience is not acceptable at any level, whether it is materialistic work or spiritual work. A devotee should always see that Supreme Lord is watching both the places, right? Um, but uh, Krishna also allows um, a devotee to be above the normal duties of a materialistic man. Um, like take care of parents, family, everything. For a pure devotee um, is may not be, uh, is, is really not is, he's um, not judged for not perfectly taking care of them because he's actually serving Supreme Lord. So brahmacharis, you know, when they are, when, they, when, when devotees become brahmacharis in somebody's house, um, when their children become brahmacharis, there's a lot of anxiety. My God, you're disobeying. You know, you are not understanding. We want this, we want that. So it's it's not widely accepted unless the parents are devotees. Um, but you should understand that they will not get any reaction because the, the children will not get any reaction because they are actually going to serve the parents in such a way that the parents will not take birth again. Right? So there's the greatest service. You all understood what I'm speaking? So, text 11. Hare Krishna, am I audible? Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Okay, text 11. Now, it's a beautiful conversation between son and father. So, please focus. So, now Brahma is saying, since you are my very obedient son, I ask you to beget children qualified like yourself in the womb of your wife. Rule the world in pursuance of the principles of devotion service. Onto the Supreme Person of God and thus worship the Lord by performance of Yajna. It is frozen. Am I frozen right now? No problem. No problem. We can, we can see. Okay, I don't know. In my screen, I am frozen here. That's okay. You are frozen on the screen, but you can see it. Huh? Yeah, it's back. Something, something happened. <laughs> Okay, so here uh, in Parpat, Prabhupada says beautifully, the purpose of the material creation by Brahma, purpose of the material creation by Brahma is clearly described herein. Every human being should beget nice children in the womb of his wife 
as a sacrifice for the purpose of worshipping the Supreme Personality of God in devotional service. Right? And he quotes from Vishnu Purana. He says, one can worship the Supreme Personality of God at Vishnu, but a proper discharge of the principles of Varna and Ashrama. There is no alternative to pacifying the Lord by execution of the principles of Varna Ashrama system. So, Provision Mataji, you know, it's also important we educate our children what their duty is and how they have to continue the family, have children also, and how they should make them Krishna conscious. Right? Text number 12. O King, if you can give proper protection to the living beings in the material world, that will be the best service for me. Uh, here is telling. What is he telling? If you give proper protection to the living beings in the material world, that will be a best service to me. When the Supreme Lord sees you to be a good protector of the conditioned souls, certainly the master of the senses will be very pleased with you. So Prabhuji, Krishna is very pleased when you are serving the living beings with Krishna consciousness. Okay, So keep aside all other ways of pleasing the Supreme Lord. Okay, If you are preaching or assisting in preaching, directly preaching, or indirectly preaching, you are doing a greater service to the Supreme Lord. Right? Recently we are hearing, ISKCON is a moment where uh, we, what is the uniqueness of ISKCON? We are assisting the Supreme Lord. <laughs> yeah. We are assisting the Supreme Lord. Supreme Lord is dependent on ISKCON for his message to go. It might sound a little arrogant when I say that, but no, it's not the way it is. Actually, Krishna is dependent on his devotees. Right, because his devotees are the ones who cause who causelessly go to any part of the world and give Krishna's message. Sometimes Krishna himself is reserved to give that message, but his devotees are not reserved. They just go everywhere, just like Lord Nityananda Prabhu, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, you know, I cannot go to some places, Nityananda Prabhu, but you can go. Right? What does it mean? He's more merciful. You know, not that just, you know, okay, externally you can say he's a grahastha, he can go, but more mostly he's more merciful even than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right? So, um, here is saying that he's pleased most. Now, in the purport, in between, um, Prabhupada says, every king therefore must know, it's very important, please hear this, every king, now who is a king here? Uh, how many kings we have on the call? We have 39 kings right now. Why am I saying king? Because you're all in charge of something. Right? You're all in charge of your family. You're in charge of the people who work for you. You're in charge. You're the small, small kings. Small, small kings in this class right now. So every king, please hear from that, that angle. Every king, therefore, must know that his responsibility in administration is not merely extracting taxes, to extract taxes from the citizens, but to see personally that the citizens under him are being trained in Vishnu worship. Right. So that is a king's duty. And Prabhupada ends saying, one who does not, now this is a very heavy part, Prabhupada says, one who does not know this is a show bottle administrator. Show bottle. <laughs> Look at the word Prabhupada is saying, show bottle administrator. Right? The bottle is filled with something and it's very attractive. But here, he's a bottle. There's nothing inside it. Empty. Right? Show bottle administrator. By training the citizens in the devotional service of the Lord, the head of the state can be free from free in his responsibility. Otherwise, he will fail in the uh, onerous duty entrusted to him and thus be punishable by the supreme authority. There is no other alternative in discharge of administrative duty. So if you are Provision Mataji, if you are a vice president, director, president, lead, project manager, anywhere where you are designated to take care of others or engage others in, 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 in work, be mindful you are, you are holding an important position. And if you take control of, their, of those people, then you should also make sure that they, uh, that they are better people in the society. And you're not making them as bad people and uh, if possible give them Krishna consciousness right like yesterday I took a seminar in the office um, about what makes one confident right that was the topic <laughs> so it was a it was a materialistic seminar but I was I quoted like I think I feel the best part of the seminar was I took Prabhupada's name like three four times right and uh, I talked about Bhagavad Gita. I quoted two, three verses from Bhagavad Gita. And uh, 
I was able to uh, indirectly tell them that meditation is good. Um, they should chant Hare Krishna mantra. Um, so they liked it. You know, they, they said, yeah, it's a good thing. 12 things to, there are 12 techniques to become confident in life. And uh, indirectly, all those techniques were related to following the experience of great people, uh, knowing the difference between good and bad, right? These are all the things that are needed to make one confident. When you know that something is good, you become more confident to do it. And how do you know that? Read from scriptures, read your history, Mahabharat, Srimad, Bhagavad, Ramayana, Bhagavad Gita. And uh, so I told them, then I said, this is the, and, 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 and at the end of it, when I asked all of them, can you tell the 12 points? I, to my surprise, after one and a half hour of lecture, everybody repeated all the 12 points, right? And when I took it to the abbreviation, when I took out the abbreviation of all the 12 points, um, it the abbreviation was starting with G-E-T-O-R-G-A-N-I-S-E-D. And what does it mean? Get organized. So to become confident, you have to get organized. Similarly, in spiritual life also, you have to become organized if you want to serve. Right. Uh, if you want to chant, lead a good spiritual life, you have to be organized in life. So why am I quoting this is because that will please the Supreme Lord, because uh, I feel that I, God has been interested in me, some responsibility to take care of certain employees in my company. I want to give them the best thing, the best thing. Right. So um, I we should take the opportunity. If people are around us, if living entities are around us, we should take the opportunity to please them. Don't hesitate. Preaching doesn't have to be that you need a mic and a set. You can even sit in a lunch um, table and tell them some good things, right? Uh, quote some stories. These days, you know, uh, one, one, one other employee came to my room and was like, I want to start reading Bhagavad Gita. He never came back again. But <laughs> the point is, you are telling, you are giving a, you are giving a message to people around you that if you are interested in God consciousness, um, you can approach me. I can, I can assist you. I can provide you the resources, right? Uh, I can help you uh, get connected like that. You don't have to appear like a guru preaching them all the time. You can also play a role of assistance. Uh, like uh, yesterday, Praveen Prabhu took his uh, uh, immediate direct reports to Vaishnava Seva Kunj. And uh, he spent, I, think, I don't know how many hours, but he spent some good time, had lunch. And they spent time together and they all felt nice. And so he connected them to cows, Bumatas, and he told uh, the activity that we do, um, you know, uh, in terms of growing vegetables or satsangs that we do there. Um, so they were interested. So they are probably were saying, can we come with our families here? Yes, of course, please come with your families, but devotional purposes. It's not a recreation place. It's a devotional place. So come there, chant a little, read a little, you know, uh, hear a little. So everybody can do whatever they can in their capacity, exactly like Swayambhu Manu is going to do in his capacity. And Brahma is telling that when you do that, the Supreme Lord is most pleased. Right? He's most pleased. Everybody can. I was also hearing from Suma Mataji that she is now, uh, she took some, while she was in a trip to Bangalore, she took some two or three seminars in her office and she was quoting from uh, scriptures um, or uh, telling them uh, telling them some things which are useful for them and indirectly telling them that bhakti is the greatest, right? So uh, being a senior director in Salesforce, she could do that, right? And uh, sometimes uh, you also understand, some of you might be thinking, oh, you need to be in a big position to do that. No, sometimes that is also a disadvantage that you're in a big position because everyone is watching you, how you do things. When you're in a small position, it's even more easy to do. You know, because you, you can just do it directly with a couple of three or four people. You can have your own uh, little study circle or a book reading circle or a, you know, friend circle in which you start sharing things. So everybody can do their part um, by having children, make them Krishna conscious. And if you don't have enough children, then make everybody's child as your child and then preach Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yeah, and that way you become a perfect administrator. Otherwise, you're going to get reactions. You get reactions. Text 13. The Supreme Person of God, Janardhana, Lord Krishna, is the form to accept all the results of sacrifice. If he is not sa satisfied, then one's labor of uh, advancement is futile. He is the ultimate self, and therefore, one who does not satisfy him certainly neglects his own interests. 
very important. If you are not satisfying Supreme Lord, then you are indirectly neglecting your own interest. What does it mean? Your real interest is in satisfying Supreme Lord, right? Uh, so, yeah, Subara Prabhu is saying, last two days I was traveling with my new management. These are the books they received. Uh, BG books. What is it? One. So last year when they were here for the acquisition Prabhu, I would give them Bhagavad Gita books. Ah. So, so last two days, you know, we've been doing a lot of discussion on these books, basically. <laughs> Some of them have read the books. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, yes. And recently, I saw a nice book called Meditation. There is a small book, small proper book. The, the title is very beautiful. Just this one title, Meditation, right? Okay, okay. And it can be given to anyone, practically anyone. You can just give it in the hand. If you want to meditate, take this, you know. And then they read inside, they understand what is meditation. Yeah. So last, yesterday we were in a big meeting with a big customer. So at the end of it, one of the guys was saying, you know, we have to do these things without expectation. This is what your book told me. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has no he has no idea of Hinduism. He has nothing, no idea, but he read a lot of lot of Bhagavad Gita book in last one year. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you for spreading the word, Prabhu. Please, everybody do it. You know, everybody can do. Everybody can do a sing, some part. Like recently, recently, Pawan Prabhu and Sandhya Mataji. I don't know how many of you know. Um, there was there were some devotees from uh, some Iskon devotees from one other temple. I forgot the place that they told, and they came from Indonesia. You know, they are from in Indonesia. They're disciples of uh, Jayapataka Swami Maharaj, and they came to his village. Somehow, they established a connect a village you know, in this village. And they organized a big program and Prabhuji went from here to there to assist them. Right? Yeah, so yeah. You can go and just assist. Make it happen. Krishna already has a plan. Just go and assist them. And that will please the Supreme Lord. So yeah. by doing so, by doing so, you are real descendants of Manu. Yeah. yeah. So so last year they saying, like, you know, there is something special from Hyderabad that we can take back to US. I said, yeah, okay, we'll put it in the kit. And one Karachiwala biscuit packet, one Bhagavad Gita, one uh, Iskan Abid's uh, dust calendar, and uh, one small uh, uh, Veena from uh, Silpa Raman. These are the four things we put in. This is all, this is what you can take from Hyderabad, we said. <laughs> very good, very good. Yeah, and, and you can tell them next time, uh, we have uh, Karachiwala uh, got expired in 2012. It's no more the best <laughs> biscuit. Uh, we have Iskan Atapur, which is making better cookies, you know, so nice, that's nice, so give them remembrance uh, yeah. make them remember Krishna chant Krishna's name, talk about Krishna, hear about Krishna and that is Krishna consciousness, right so, amazing, thank you and I'm sure everybody has some inspiring story, by doing so by doing these services, Prabhu and Matajis we are not looking for recognition. We are looking for blessings of our father Manu. So that's exactly what Manu. Uh, I'm going to mute somebody who is Lovesh Prabhu. Sorry, I muted you. Yeah. So, Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Sorry, I actually want to discuss something. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Prabhu ji, actually tomorrow na this Sri Hari Prabhu ji's sister. She is a devotee in America. She came to India and she want to organize some program in her home with Sri Hari Prabhu family. So they. Me. I think you also. So I just want to ask him how to work out from that. Yeah. So, sorry, your voice is breaking suddenly, but I think I heard your question. So she wants to organize a program and how to do it. So, so, they are asking our assistant that we can come and do something. Oh, is your mic touching your collar or is it touching anything? Yeah. I will. Sorry. Now it's okay? Yeah, it's better now. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Now it's okay, Prabhu? A lot better. Now we can hear you more than uh, scratches. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we can discuss after the call if you want. But the point is, the point is, you know, they want to do program. So if any devotee is available for the service, they can go and speak a little, uh, sing a little, talk a little about Krishna and come back. That's the program. So maybe Prabhu, you can go if you are available. I don't know your schedule tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow evening we have a big program, but others who are already preaching other small batches here and there may not be able to go. Uh, but the opportunity is already. He called me also, and uh, that's what I told him. Uh, just sit down and 
call it devotees, you know. <laughs> okay, in the interest of time, I have many more verses to go forward. The, so here it is being told, yeah, text 13. The Supreme Person of God, Janardhana, Krishna, in the form uh, to accept all the results of sacrifice, if he is not satisfied, then one's labor for advancement is futile. He is, ultimate, he is the ultimate self and therefore one who does not satisfy him certainly neglects his own interest. We already read this, okay. So Brahma is deputed, Purpat Prabhupada says, Brahma is deputed as the supreme head of universal affairs and he is, he in turn, he in his turn deputes Manu and others as charges the affairs of the material manifestation. But the whole show is for satisfaction of Supreme Person. If God had, text 14, Sri Manu said, O oh, all-powerful Lord, O oh, killer of all sins, I shall abide by your order. Now please let me know my place that of uh, my place and that of the living in it is born of me. So here he is saying, okay, now you have given me the duty. Now where should I go? Where should I start? In which area? Gachiboli, Nanakramuda, where, where do you want me to start? <laughs> you know, Manu, Manu is saying. And by, while he said that, you know, text number 15, Oh, Master of the Demigods, please attempt to lift the earth, which is merged in the great water because it is the dwelling place for all living entities. It can be done by your endeavor and by the mercy of the Lord. So he said, okay, you're, you're telling me to populate. But by the way, the earth is inside the water, right? Uh, make the arrangement so it comes out so I can go and populate that place, right? So Brahma is actually shocked to know this. Maitreya Muni is saying, text 16, Sri Maitreya said, Thus, seeing the earth merged in the water, Brahma gave his attention for a long time to how it could be lifted. Now, Brahma is saying, oh my God, what should I do? Now, here, Prabhuji and Mataji, there are different incarnations. I mean, many times, Varahadeva appeared. Don't think only once, just to kill Hiranyakshai appeared. Uh, Varahadeva appeared in many times, in many ways, right? Uh, so, this is one of the ones in Purport Prabhupada says, the present topics are of the Shweta Varaha millennium and topics regarding the Chakshusha millennium will also be discussed in this chapter. Now, Chakshusha millennium is the time when Hiranyaksha came and put the earth into the uh, into the causal ocean and Varahadev came and lifted it. That was Chakshusha. But here we are talking about the beginning of the creation where the earth was submerged in the water, Shweta Varaha millennium, where Shweta Varaha, the white Varahadev, right? Shweta Varaha. So he appears there and uh, lifts the earth planet. But surprisingly, here, uh, here Maitreya Muni becomes um, so ecstatic um, talking about Varahadev. But at one point, he mixes both these uh, incidents, right? He is talking about Shweta Varaha lifting the uh, earth planet um, on top of the water. But suddenly he also remembers, oh, by the way, he also killed. Uh, Vara, he also killed uh, uh, Hiranyaksha. So, uh, Vishnu Chakrati Thakur explains that just out of the ecstasy that is mixing both the uh, different millenniums, uh, Leelas, uh, but here what is happening, there is no Hiranyaksha here. It is it is purely the Lord is coming to lift uh, the earth because it's submerged in the water. Right? So, so that Manu can start his creation. He needs a place to work. To, uh, take 17. Brahma thought, while I, were, while I have been engaged in the process of creation, the earth has been inundated by a deluge and has gone down into the depths of the ocean. What can we do who are engaged in this matter of creation? It is best to let the Almighty Lord direct us. So it's like, you know, I'm engaged now in the creation. I don't know how it happened. It's there. So let the Lord deal with it because it's, it's a too big thing. How can I lift something like that? You know, so he's taking assistance. So Prabhupada explains that, you know, that's the right mood when you're doing the service. Sometimes you can't do something. Then you immediately depend on Supreme Lord, right? So uh, text 18, O sinless Vidura, all of a sudden, while Brahma was engaged in thinking, a small form of a boar came out of his nostril. Like it said, like little part of thumb says, it came out. The measurement of the creature was not more than the upper portion of the thumb, like this much. Right, the upper portion of the thumb is this line after the thumb, right? This size, you know, creature comes comes out of Brahma's nose. Just imagine from where you can imagine the Lord to come, and if you can come from anywhere. Oh, descendant of Bharata, while Brahma was observing him, that boar 
became situated in the sky in a wonderful manifestation as a gigantic, as gigantic as a great elephant. So it became little, 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 big, 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 massive. It became like massive. Text 20. Now here is where our faith will be undergoing up the ups and downs. So please see it from the vision of the greatness of Supreme Lord, right? Struck with wonder at observing the wonderful boar-like form in the sky, Brahma, with great Brahmanas like Marichi, Marichi, as well as uh, the Kumaras and Manu began to argue in various ways. You know, like, oh my God, what is going on? Everybody is looking, the Kumaras, Marichi, you know, the, 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 the Manu, everybody is looking, who is this huge personality who has just come? It is, in, is this some extraordinary entity come in the presence of a boar? It is very wonderful that he has come from my nose, right? Now, one other thing, this is another place where you can smash the stupid Darwin theory that boar was also there and they already knew that it is a boar. In, in, at the beginning of Brahma's creation, boar came. Brahma didn't even create, uh, the creation didn't even start. So the recognition of an animal called boar was there even before Brahma started the creation, which means what? All these 8.4 million species existed. It's so that that's the way you have to look at it, right? I mean, Brahma is saying, Oh, there is this boar. They all recognizing that it's a boar. And they all just took birth. How can they know what is a boar? Because they have been taking birth many, many times, right? So they, they this knowledge is already there. First of all, this boar was so bigger than the tip of a thumb, and within uh, was was no bigger than the tip of a thumb, and within a moment he was as large as a stone. Um, my mind is perturbed. Is he the supreme personality of God Vishnu? So, looking at the uncommon, Prabhupada says the purpose, looking at the uncommon characteristics, Prabhupada immediately uh, Brahma immediately understood. He cannot be my creation. This is something, something to do with the supreme personality of God. So, even bewildered Brahma. 23. While Brahma was deliberating with his sons, the supreme personality of God Vishnu roared tumultuously like a great mountain. Now, Prabhupada immediately takes the chance to say, by the way, he's telling that he roared like a mountain. So, mountains are also living entities. So, mountains also can roar. Right? So, so you can imagine everything is a living being in, the, in this universe. Right? And uh, they're comparing it to a roar of a mountain when, when uh, Varadev roared. Text 24. The omnipotent Supreme Personality of God enlivened Brahma and other highly elevated Brahmanas by again roaring with his uncommon voice, which echoed in all directions. Right? So he's roaring just to tell, I have come. Prabhupada says, appearance of the wonderful and gigantic incarnation of Vishnu as a mountain like boar did not fill them with any kind of fear. Although the Lord's resounding voice was tumultuous and echoed horribly in all directions as an open tree to all demons who might challenge his omnipotency. Right? And like when Krishna comes, he's like, okay, you know what? Who is a believer? Who is a non-believer? I am here. Come on. He's like, you know, Prabhupada is saying it's a challenge to the non-believers that I am here. You want to believe me or no? It's up to you. Right? Like when he comes as death, when Krishna comes as death, he's like, whether you believe me or not, I'm going to devour you now. You All your life you have been like an atheist, rejecting me, not accepting my, my, my position, not accepting your father. You have, you have wasted your life. But anyway, whether you believe it or not, you are going to be subdued because I have come as death, right? Prabhupada says that when people reject God, they see God as death. That's what it means. Text 25. When the great sages and thinkers who are residents of Janaloka, Tapaloka and Satyaloka heard the tumultuous voice of the, of the Lord Bore, which was all auspicious sound and all merciful and all merciful Lord, they chanted auspicious chants from the three Vedas. So these these lokas are above the Swarga Loka, Jana Loka, Tapa Loka, Satya Loka, they're above the, uh, the, the Swarga Loka. So these lokas don't get submerged. At every la last class we were discussing in VSK, I was explaining about the time dimension. I told that these lokas don't go under the water um, for every night of Brahma, right? Only, only when Brahma leaves his body, at that time, they all are submerged. But these people are extraordinary people. They can go from one planet to another planet. So they all started chanting the mantras. So here, uh, Prabhupada explains in the word, one of the words in the verse, ma, maya, maya. 
the word maya maya is very significant in this verse maya means mercy specific knowledge and also illusion so three things it means therefore lord bore is everything supreme lord he is merciful he is all knowledgeable and he is illusion also right he is illusion also in between the purport proper says the earth planet was submerged in the mire but on hearing the sound of the lord the inhabitants of the higher planets were all jubilant because they knew that the lord was there to deliver the earth so they all started chanting vedic mantras right vedic mantra oh you know vedic mantras are a way to reciprocate oh you have come oh supreme lord but at the end proper says in the purport the most important mantra is there in brahma narad brahat narad brahan narad purana hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so we can also chant now right those brahmanas those great sages were were chanting from tapaloka janaloka maharloka when they saw the lord varahadev what do you do we can also chant but if even if you don't know all those mantras brahan narad purana says the best mantra that you can chant is hare krishna mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare and that will please the supreme lord so playing like an elephant he entered into the water after roaring again in reply to the vedic prayers of the great devotees the lord is the object of vedic prayers please hear the hear the translation the lord is the object of the vedic prayers and thus he understood that the devotees prayers are meant for him right everything in the veda is veda is server aham vedya veda is veda that they to understand me right so as soon as they chanted he understood oh they are not chanting for somebody they are chanting for me right so that's the reason provision math we should always learn vedic prayers i know we all can pray our own we have a emotion to pray but when you chant vedic prayers automatically krishna understands he is trying to do those prayers for me not for his own sense gratification or some kind of a ritual whenever there is glory purport says at the end of the purport whenever there is a glorification of the lord it is to be understood that vedic mantras are being rightly vibrated the lord was therefore pleased when such vedic mantras were chanted and to encourage his pure devotees he roared one more once more and entered the water to rescue the submerged earth right so uh, he becomes more happy he starts roaring again as soon as he sees his devotees are chanting he's like whoa you know my devotees are chanting for me he roars again right similar thing krishna also does you know if you can compare it but kaliya leela where you know where kaliya snake comes to vrindavan and he is on that snake and the end and then as soon as devotee sees in control of the snake oh this small child and they start become very happy and they are clapping and they are and they are laughing and they are like jubil hey krishna 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 mahabaho you are doing this and krishna does more he starts further dancing he starts further enacting right so remember that when you chant mantras with more enthusiasm krishna krishna becomes more and more happy uh, and he does more uh, for 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 his devotee satisfaction right so text number 27 before entering the water to rescue the world the lord bore flew in the air smashing his nail so literally smash his nail and flew in the air uh, his hand his hard hair quivering uh, quivering his very glance was luminous and he and he scattered the clouds in the sky with his hooves and his glittering white tusks right so he literally showed his darshan like big darshan this is happy see supreme lord gives his darshan when he is happy with you right so if someone says prabhu i have had the darshan he is not happy that's the reason you not feeling satisfied after darshan but if you are satisfied after darshan that means he actually revealed himself to you <coughs> the poet jayadeva a great, great devotee uh, sings in his uh, you know what is it prayers the dashavatara prayers right vasati dashana shikare dharani tava lagna श्री साशिनि कलं कलंक के कलेव निमग्ना केशव धृता सुकर रूपा जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे सो इट मींस ऑल ग्लोरी टू लॉर्ड केशव कृष्णा हु अपीयर्ड एज अ बोर एज अ बोर द अर्थ वाज हिड बिटवीन हिज टस्क्स व्हिच अपीयर्ड लाइक द स्कार्स ऑन द मून राइट so here is praying jayadev was swami the moment he saw this boar text 28 he was personally the supreme lord vishnu and was therefore transcendental 
Yet because he had the body of a hog, he surged after the earth by smell. His tusks were fearful and he glanced over the devotee brahmanas engaging in offering prayers. Thus he entered the water. Now he's searching for the earth in the water. Just like if you've seen a, if you've seen a, a hog you know, outside, it keeps searching, smelling and searching. So he showed those qualities. Now, you know, Acharya explained, Krishna is the best when he does any character. Even if he's doing a boar's character, he'll do it in such a perfect way uh, that you would never see any boar doing it so perfectly. So he's the perfection in any situation. He's, he's a perfect person. But you should not misunderstand that he's a boar. Krishna is not a boar, but he is beautiful, the most transcendental, the most blissful, the most attractive person, even in the form of a boar. And he's playing the role of a boar. So Prabhupada says in the purpose, the assumption of the form of boar is only his pastime. The body of all, his body is all Vedas or transcendental. But since he had assumed the form of a boar, he began to search out the earth by smelling just like a hog. Now underline this. The Lord can perfectly play the part of any living entity. So when when Lord becomes takes a place of any living entity, nobody can play that role better than Lord. Like Ram Navami is coming. When he when he took the role of playing the role of a human being, he is called as Mariada Purushottam Ramachandra Bhagwan. Right? Mariada Purushottam. So he played the best role as a as a human being. So when he comes as a boar also, he does the best role. Translation, text 29. Diving into the water like a great mountain, Lord Bore divided the middle of the ocean. The two high waves appeared as the arms of the ocean, which cried loudly as, as if praying the Lord, Oh Lord of all sacrifices, please do not cut me into two. Kindly give me protection. Like, you know, even the ocean is ecstatic when, when you know, the casual ocean, not our Chota Mota ocean that the Indian Sea Indian Ocean, or it's casual ocean in which the whole earth land is submerged. Right? It is, it, is, it is praying to the Supreme Lord. Text 30. Lord Bore penetrated the water with his hoops, which were like sharp arrows, and found the limits of the ocean. Although it was unlimited, he saw the earth, the resting place of all living beings, lying as it was, it was in the beginning of creation, and he personally lifted it. So, uh, in the beginning of creation, earth was there, so he lifted and kept it above the water. Right? He looked at it. Text 31. Lord Bore very uh, easily took the earth on his tusks and got it out of the water. Thus he appeared very splendid. Then his anger, his anger glowing like the Sudarshan wheel, he immediately killed the demon Hiranyaksha, although he tried to fight with the Lord. <laughs> so here is the thing, right? So here you can see that this is the Sveteshwara, Sveteshwara millennium where there is no Hiranyaksha. But uh, Maitreya Muni is so ecstatic that he brings the Chakshusha millennium also and mixes it and says, he came outside, he lifted her, but by the way, he also kills uh, in an action. Here in the purport, uh, Jiva Goswami is quoting a purport here. According to Jiva Goswami, the Vedic literature describes the incarnation of Lord Varaha Bore in two different devastations, namely the Chakshusha devastation and the Swayambhuva devastation. This particular appearance of the Lord Bore incarnation actually took place in the Swayambhuva devastation when all planets other than uh, other than the higher ones jana mahar and satya submerged in the water of devastation this particular uh, incarnation of the lord bore was seen by the inhabitants of the planet Bo. shri shri la vishwana chakrati thakura suggests that the sage maitreya amalgamated both the bore incarnations in different devastations and summarized them in the description to vidura right so you understand what's happening here is sorry i'll just mute. Yeah. Sorry, Kamishara Prabhu, I just muted you. Yeah. Okay. So, so what is happening here is when uh, uh, basically when when the Brahma's night comes, please hear this. We discussed this in the last chapter, 3.9. When Brahma's night comes, all the planets go are submerged. But only until Swargaloka. I mean, the 14 planetary systems, only under Swargaloka, the planets go down. Above the Swargaloka, they don't go down. So the Jana Loka, Mahar Loka, Tapaloka, they are actually above. They, they stay above. They don't get so. Even the Satya Loka, where Brahma lives. Right? But at the end of Brahma's life, all these planets go down. So in this millennium, this, uh, this, this millennium called, this particular devastation. So Brahma's night just happened. So Brahma's night just happened. So all the planets went down. Right? 
and then Brahma is waking up. Its day starts again. So here Lord is coming and taking out the earth planet out of that ocean. And who is watching it? The other three planet people are watching, right? So it is happening at that time. Yeah. So text 32. Thereupon the Lord bore killed the demon within the water. Just as a lion kills an elephant, the cheeks and tongue of the Lord became smeared with the blood of the demon. Just as an elephant becomes reddish from digging in the purple earth. Now he's talking about the fight that happened, the way he killed uh, Hiranyaksha in the other millennium, but he's just describing there. Then the Lord, playing like an elephant, suspended the earth on the edge of his uh, curved white tusks. He assumed a bluish complexion like that of a Tamala tree, and thus the sages headed by Brahma could understand him to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead and offer respectful obeisances to the Lord. Then they understood, my God, how can it be anybody else than the Supreme Lord? Who can do this amazing act? Text 34. All the sages uttered with great respect. Oh, unconquerable enjoyer of all sacrifices, all glories, all, all victories, all glories to you, unto you. You are moving in your form of the prescribed Vedas and in the hair holes of your body, the oceans are submerged for certain reasons. To uplift the earth, you have now assumed the form of a boat. Right? Uh, so in all circumstances, Prabhupada starts the purpose in all circumstances, whether it is a poor or however it is, he is the cause of all causes. He is the cause of all causes. Sarva Karana, Karana. Text 35. Oh Lord, your form is worshipable by performance of sacrifice, but souls who are simply miscreants are unable to see it. All the Vedic hymns, Gayatri and others are in touch, are in the touch of your skin. In your body hairs is a kusha grass. In your, in your eyes is the clarified butter. And in your four legs are the four kinds of fruitative activities, right? So Brahma is praising here about um, about how Vedas, you know, everything is coming and everything is for his satisfaction, right? So you should read the purport. It's, it's, it's a beautiful purport here about uh, where Prabhupada quotes from 715 that only foolish people, they reject the Supreme Lord. How can they not see the Supreme Lord? Text 36. Oh Lord, your tongue is a, is a plate of sacrifice, your nostril is another plate of sacrifice, and your belly is an eating plate of sacrifice. So what all is going on here? His nostril, his tongue, his belly, and another plate of sacrifice, the holes of your ears. In your mouth is a, Brahm, is a Brahma plate of sacrifice, your throat is a plate of sacrifice, known as Soma, and whatever you chew is known as Agnihotra. So everything is for your satisfaction. That's the point that's coming. At the end, Prabhupada, Prabhupada, Prabhupada writes, you are doing so many yajna. So yajna, 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 yajna. The whole verse is filled with yajna. So Prabhupada says, in other words, taking shelter of the Lord and rendering service unto Him is the factual performance of all sacrifices explained herein. Different plates of sacrifice correspond to different parts of the body of the Lord's incarnation. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, it is explicitly directed that one should perform Sankirtana Yajna to please the Lord's incarnation as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This should be rigidly followed in order to achieve the result of Yajna performance. So whatever Yajna sacrifice that were done by great Devatas, great Rishi Munis when they saw Varasdev can also be done by you and me sitting in Nanakramuna Gachivali by simply chanting what? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, 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 your tongue is a prior activities of initiation. Your head is a fire without sacrifice, as well as the fire of worship. And your living forces are the aggregate of all desires. Like he is praising. You are everything. You know, you have come here and, and we can see, and we, and we can see everything in you. Oh Lord, your semen is a sacrifice called Soma Yajna. Your growth is a ritualistic performance of the morning. Your skin and touch Sensations are the seven elements of the Agni's, Agni's Toma sacrifice. Your bodily joints are symbols of various other sacrifices performed in 12 days. 
Therefore, you are the object of all sacrifices called Soma and Asoma, and you are bound by yajnas only. Prabhupada says, anyone performing such yajnas regularly is supposed to be situated with the Lord. But anyone who is in contact with the Supreme Lord by discharging devotional service is understood to have performed all the varieties of yajnas. So basically, yajna you can perform when you are with the Lord. But when you are doing service, you are automatically with the Lord. Devotional service is so great that even you know, if the Lord is not present there, he is automatically present because your devotional service invokes his mercy. Text 39. <clears throat> so Prabhupada says, you know, before that, uh, last, I'll just read the last line of the purport. But anyone who is in contact with the Supreme Lord by discharging devotional service understood to have performed all different varieties of yajna. So if you're doing devotional service, you don't have to worry about what all yajnas are there in the Vedas. You're, not, you're doing everything automatically. Text 39. O oh Lord, you are the Supreme Person of Godhead and are worshipable by universal prayers, Vedic hymns and sacrificial, sacrificial ingredients. We offer our obeisance unto you. You can be realized by the pure mind, freed from all visible and invisible material contamination. We offer our respectful obeisances to you as a Supreme Spiritual Master of Knowledge in devotional service. Haribo. One who engages, Purpur Prabhupada says, one who engages in devotional service to the Lord, according to the regulative principles, is automatically freed from material desires. And in that pure state of mind, one can realize the Supreme Personality of God. Yeah. Tesham Satata Yuktanam Bhajatam Priti Purokam Dhami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenama Upayantite. To one who constantly engages in the devotional service of the Lord with faith and love, the Lord certainly gives the intelligence to achieve Him at the ultimate end. Right? So text 40. O lifter of the earth, the earth with its mountains, which you have lifted with your dust, is situated as beautifully as a lotus flower with leaves sustained by an infuriated elephant just coming out of the water. Now here, you know, he's praising that how beautiful the earth is looking when it is in contact with you. Right? Understand this. Brahma's prayer is, oh, earth is looking so beautiful because it's in contact with you. Everything in earth becomes auspicious when it is in contact with the Supreme Lord. In Purport, Prabhupada says, the fortune of the earth planet is praised because of it being specifically sustained by the Lord. Its beauty is appreciated and compared to, the, to that of a lotus flower situated on the tusk of an elephant. A lotus flower with leaves is very beautifully situated. So the world with its many beautiful mountains appeared on the tusk of a Lord boat. Now because, it is explained by Acharya that because Lord Varaha touched earth. That is the reason earth has all the minerals. That is the reason earth has all the things that we are useful for all of us, right? Uh, everything that we are using from earth is all because Lord Varaha touched. You know, uh, it is so auspicious and so important that Lord is worshipped on this planet. You know, we should construct more temples, more uh, uh, satsangs, because Lord will become pleased and the planet will become blessed. 41. O oh Lord, as the peaks of the great mountains become beautiful when they with when decorated with clouds, your transcendental body has become beautiful because of your lifting the earth on the edge of your tusks. Right? He's saying you are becoming beautiful by doing it, and and the earth planet also is becoming beautiful because on you. The further Prabhupada explains the word vibrama is significant. Vibrama means illusion as well as beauty. When a cloud rests on a peak of a great mountain. It appears to be sustained by the mountain, but at the same time, it looks very beautiful. Similarly, Lord has no need to sustain the earth on his tusks, but when he does so, the world becomes beautiful, just as the Lord becomes more beautiful because of his pure devotees on the earth. Right? So what makes the earth beautiful? Pure devotees of Lord. If pure devotees of Lord are not there in the earth planet, it is a sick place to live. Although the Lord is the transcendental personification of the Vedic hymns, he has become more beautiful because of his appearance to sustain the earth. Haribo. Text 42. O Lord, for the residential purpose of all inhabitants, both the moving and non-moving, the earth, this earth is your wife and you are the supreme father. We offer our supreme, uh, our respectful obeisances onto you along with mother earth in whom you have invested uh, your own potency just as an expert Sacrificer puts fire in the Arani wood. Now understand here, I was saying sometime back, because he touched the earth planet, the earth planet became 
filled with all nutrients and all minerals and everything. So you are blessing the earth uh, by touching it, right? And both, I'm worshipping both the earth and you. In Prabhupada, uh, at the end, Prabhupada says, the mother is not independent in producing children. Similarly, the material nature cannot produce living creatures unless, one second, someone has unmuted again. Uh, vanilla Mathe, okay, I'm muting you. Yeah. Okay. The mother is not independent in producing children. Similarly, material nature cannot produce living creatures unless in contact with the Supreme Father, the Supreme Person. You've got it. Srimad Bhagavatam teaches us to offer obeisances onto the mother along with the father. Srimad Bhagavatam, please, everybody focus. Prabhupada is saying, Srimad Bhagavatam teaches us to offer obeisances onto the mother along with the father. Right? The, sup the Supreme Lord, because it is a father only who impregnates the mother with all energies of the sustenance and maintenance of all living beings, both moving and non-moving. So, father's soul is huge. Right? Text 43. Who else but you, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, could deliver the earth from it within the water? It is not very wonderful for you. Uh, however, because you acted most wonderfully in creation of this universe. By your energy, you have created this wonderful cosmic manifestation. Like you lifting the earth is not great wonder for you, Krishna, because you've done it so many times. Your whole creation is yours. You can do anything. See, this is a faith that should come. You can do anything. We should develop this faith as devotees. You know, we should. Uh, Krishna, you can do anything. You can do anything. When you are in trouble, he can do anything. He can even fix your office problem. He can fix your tax problem. He can fix your health problem. He can fix your any problem because he is a creator. You can do anything. Right, and the, when you have that faith that God can do anything, His leelas become more uh, beautiful. But if you're doubting, say, How can God do anything? Ah, this is your imagination. Like atheistic people, they tell all these avatars are imagination, you just create something and you're satisfied talking about them. No, these people don't understand, they don't have brains. You know, in purport, purport says, Then a devotee is therefore not astonished to see the wonderful bore because he knows that the Lord is able to act far more wonderfully by his potencies, which are inconceivable to the brain of even the most erudite scientist. The most erudite scientist's brain is not going to understand this, but a devotee can understand. Prabhupada is saying. Text 44. O Supreme Lord, undoubtedly, we are in we are the inhabitants of the most pious planets, the Jana, Tapas, and Satyalokas, but still we have been purified by the drops of the water sprinkled from your shoulder hairs by the shaking of your body. So just imagine, the bore comes out, it does like this, right? I mean, you can see the bores outside. Krishna is playing the role of a bore, so he also shakes like that. And all the water that comes from the ocean is sprinkled on everyone, and that becomes a prashad. You know, especially the Janat, Tapa, and uh, Satyalokas, they're all above the water even then, so when the Lord sprinkled, it fell on them, right? So the sages are very happy. Yeah. The Ganges water is pure, so when the Lord touches this water, everything becomes Ganges, right? So, so uh, it's because Ganges is pure because it comes from His lotus feet. It's touched by Him. The Lord, there is no limit to your. Oh Lord, there is no limit to your wonderful activities. Anyone who desires to know the limit of your activities is certainly non-sensual. Um, everyone in this world is conditioned by the powerful mystic potencies. Please bestow, bestow your causeless mercy upon these conditioned souls, right? So here is talking about conditioned souls, you know, please. So Brahma is all the time praying for all of us, you know, all of us. Especially uh, Brahma is praying for me in flat number 501, uh, wherever I live. So because he knows these conditioned souls will never appreciate you. They'll, they have to understand. So Maitri Muni is ending this particular conversation saying, the sage Maitri said, the Lord being thus worshipped by all the great sages and transcendentalists, touched the earth with his hooves and placed it on the water. Text 47. In this manner, the personality of God and Lord Vishnu, the maintainer of all living entities, raised the earth from within the water and having placed it afloat on the water, he returned to his abode. Yeah, so he returned. So text 48. If one hears, now here is a benediction. Everybody, everybody who has heard it attentively, you are going to get a prize now. If one hears and describes in devotion service attitude, uh, devotion service attitude, this auspicious narration of Lord Bore, which is worthy of description, the Lord, description the Lord, who is within the heart of everyone, is very pleased. So just by hearing 
because we all have heard this on this date, uh, Ekadashi day, Krishna is pleased. See the beauty, right? I mean, we just heard, we didn't do anything. We just sat down and heard and Krishna is pleased. So text 49, nothing means unachieved, nothing remains unachieved when the Supreme Personality of Godhead is pleased with someone. By transcendental achievement, one understands everything else to be insignificant. One who engages in the transcendental loving service is, ele is elevated to the highest perfectional stage by the Lord himself, who is seated in everyone's heart. Right? So Krishna is in our heart, so he's satisfied whenever we read about him, we talk about him, and serve him in loving service. Prabhupada says in 1010, the Lord gives, Bhavadita 1010, the Lord gives intelligence to the pure devotees so that they may be elevated to the highest perfection stage. So Krishna says, I, am, I will give you the intelligence to reach me. Last verse, text 50. Who other than one who is not a human being, no, the very heavy last statement by Brahmana, please. I think we should repeat it. Let, let's try. Who other than one? Who not, other than one? Who other than one? Who is not a human being? Who is not a human being? Can exist in this world? Can, can exist in this world? And not be interested? And not, not be interested? In the ultimate goal of life. In the ultimate, ultimate goal of life. Who can refuse the nectar? Who, who can refuse the nectar? Of narrations about the personality of Godheads. Of the narrations of the personality of Godheads. Activities. 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 Which by itself. Which, which by, by itself. itself. Can render one. Can, can render one. 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 From, one. The from the material banks. From all material banks. So in purport. So he's saying. How can anybody being a human being not like this? Right? So Prabhupada's purport is really heavy at the end. In between it says, only an animal or a man who is almost an animal in behavior can refuse to take interest in hearing the transcendental message of Lord. <laughs> like Prabhupada directly eating, only an animal. So the people, unfortunate conditioned people for whom Brahma is praying, they are equal to animals because they don't know about God. They are not even interested to hear about God. Prabhupada is saying only an animal or a man who is almost an animal in behavior can refuse to take interest in hearing the transcendental message of the Lord. There are many books of stories and histories in the world, but except for the histories or narrations on the topics of the personality of God, none are capable of diminishing the burden of material pangs. The burden of material pangs taking birth here and again can be removed only by hearing about the past tense of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, one who is serious about eliminating material existence must chant and hear the transcendental activities of the personality of God. And otherwise, one must be compared to non-humans. Hare Krishna. Thus ends the Bhakti on the purpose, the third canto, 13th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Appearance of Lord Varhadev. So, Prabhupada and Mathajis, it's already 9-10. I'm sorry it took more time. So, uh, the conclusion is simple. We are very, we are very fortunate that we are attending these Bhagavatam classes. We are reading this Bhagavatam. I am fortunate that I am reading this Bhagavatam Purports of Prabhupada. Everyone is fortunate that you are also reading when your turn comes. But who are the unfortunate people who don't attend Bhagavatam classes? Right? Who don't get to hear? Who don't get to? Um, who don't get to connect with the Supreme Lord? Provision Mataji's, we are not a social group, we are a spiritual group, and everybody, please come to the Bhagavatam classes, right? Because what is being discussed here is what is being discussed here is the Supreme Lord's Leelas. And there is no other way, no other way, no other way. Hello, Nastheva, Nastheva, Nastheva. To get out of this material world than to than to chant the glories of Krishna, than to hear the glories of Varahadeva. Now, for the rest of the day. Everyone remember how great Varadev is, right? Even if you're drinking water, remember this water is there. It has minerals inside because Varadev touched this planet Earth, right? So remember, see God in everything, in everything. Not only his name and fame and glories and pastimes, but even in his creation, he is there. His presence can be felt. Okay, so I have some important service. I have to go. So if you, anybody has any questions, maybe I'll take one. Or we can wrap up.
ओके सो बरगद देव भगवान की जय सो टुमारो राधेश्याम प्रभु इज कमिंग इज अ बिग फेस्टिवल फॉर एस प्लीज ब्रिंग ऑल योर डीटीज एवरीबडी हैज टू कम बाय 245 व्होएवर वांट्स टू ब्रिंग योर डीटीज इन वर्शिप एज पार्ट ऑफ द फेस्टिवल ऑफ डीटीज ब्रिंग योर डीटीज बाय 245 नॉट 246 Two forty-five. <laughs> I'm being trying to be very strict these days. I don't know why, but I have to be strict to myself. Be by two forty-five in the hall, so that we can do some services. We can nicely engage ourselves in devotional service, right? So please come early, so we can have a nice festival for the pleasure of Krishna, for the pleasure of Krishna, right? Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Namcha kalpadru bhascha. प्रभुजी थैंक यू प्रभुजी